Going into today, the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers were the only two unbeaten teams left in the National Football League. And after week six, both teams went down in defeat today in really odd, curious, and questionable ways. The San Francisco 49ers losing on the road to the Cleveland Browns in a game in which they were sloppy. It looked as though they overlooked their opponent. They turned the football over, and they weren't themselves. And that identity for San Francisco, the same as it was for Philadelphia, the two teams who were on a collision course together to meet in the NFC Championship game once again, in my opinion, because Philadelphia in this game, there were multiple opportunities to win it. But Jalen Hurts had his worst game of the season. He threw an awful interception late, which allowed the New York Jets to pretty much win that football game. And this Eagles offense looked flustered and confused against a very physical and fast New York Jets defense. The final score, 20 to 14. And Hurts, you look at the stat line, 28 to 30, uh, 45, 281 yards, a touchdown, three interceptions. Philadelphia was bad along the offensive line. Lane Johnson got injured with an ankle early in this game in the first quarter. He was out for the remainder of it. And Jack Driscoll having to hold down the fort at right tackle, he didn't hold anything down. In fact, he was letting Jets defenders go by him all throughout the day. And hopefully Lane Johnson is going to be okay when he plays for Philadelphia. They are a much better team record-wise as compared to when he's not on the field. He's been so pivotal and so crucial to the Eagles' success, both culturally and statistically as far as the offensive production. And at the end of the day, he is the best right tackle in the game. And his absence was certainly felt. So not only did the Eagles struggle to pass protect with Jack Driscoll against a really, really good New York Jets front, they could not run the football all throughout the day either. DeAndre Swift, 10 carries for 17 yards. He did make some plays happen through the air. Had a very costly fumble in this game too. A.J. Brown, fourth consecutive game in which he had more than 100 receiving yards. He was one of the only players on this Eagles offense to do anything. And you look at the Eagles offensive numbers against New York at MetLife in the Meadowlands. They gained 348 yards offensively, 5 yards per play. Hurts, we talked about those numbers. Running it as a team, this is supposed to be a strength of this Eagles squad. 22 carries for 79 yards. They couldn't get anything working. Really, what this game comes down to, the fact that the Eagles should have and could have won this game despite turning the football over four times is somewhat of a miracle. Time of possession was even, but three interceptions for Jalen Hurts. Two of them were on him, and they were two really awful throws. Throws in which he's going to look back at it, and he's going to want to correct it, but he's going to wonder, what the hell was I seeing? Because I'm not sure what Hurts was seeing, especially on the last one. Tried to go to Dallas Goddard, fit the ball in between two defenders. He threw it right to the defender, who was able to intercept it. That's what paved open the opportunity for New York to score that go-ahead touchdown. The third interception that he threw was actually the first one. It was on Dallas Goddard. Eagles also with that fumble for DeAndre Swift. And against a defense like this, when you turn the football over, they start to get the momentum. They start to feel themselves. And everything was kind of a piling on effect for the Eagles here. And nothing seemed to be going their way. Last year, a lot of things did go their way. In this game, sometimes at points this season, things have seemed hard. And myself and producer Chip, we were talking about this during the watch party. The Eagles continue to be sloppy. They continue to be inefficient in the red zone. They can't turn red zone trips into touchdowns. Today, turnovers really cost them and bit them in the ass. But what really stands out to me, plays getting in late, false starts, and just sloppy play where things don't appear to be organized. And for a Super Bowl contending team, those things have to get cleared up. And the unfortunate thing for Philadelphia here is that the passing game all throughout this year, really every week this season, has gotten better and better and better. Today, though, against the Jets, that was a step back. And why I'm a little bit concerned is that this Jets defense is legit. We warned you all throughout the week. I told you here on the show, thought the Eagles were going to win, but this Jets defense is a very good unit. They were without their top four cornerbacks in this game. 
Yet with their defensive line play and how fast their linebackers were, they caused the Eagles problems. They matched their speed from sideline to sideline. They matched their speed vertically. And the Eagles kind of just looked bothered, unable to find a rhythm all throughout the game. A lot more to get to here as we dive further into this first Eagles loss of the 2023 season. First, though, today's show is sponsored by Game Time. If you're looking for last-minute tickets, this is the only app that you should be using because this app gets you the guaranteed lowest price, especially as the event gets closer. If you're looking to watch the birds home or away at Lincoln Financial Field or a different venue, you want to watch the Philadelphia Phillies play in the NLCS or the Philadelphia 76ers, Flyers play. There are events of all types of categories that you can go to. Sporting events, comedy shows, concerts. That's why you download the Game Time app and you get $20 off if you use the code EaglesChat. It's the best ticketing app at the, out there for all of these reasons. You get those last minute tickets and flash deals, games, concerts, and more. Those are the events that we're talking about. It's very easy to use where you can see the vantage point and the price point of the seats that you get allowing you, if you use this app, to get a view from your seat so you know what to expect when you sit down after making that lofty purchase. And some really good Eagles games coming up next weekend, prime time against the Miami Dolphins, a difficult game for Philadelphia. So use the promo code EaglesChat to get $20 off. You see the redeem code screen here. You get to save money and you get to get some really good tickets to some high-quality events, and it's not just sporting events that we're talking about here. The unfortunate part of this game for the Eagles here on Sunday is that they wasted away a really good defensive performance. I mean, the New York Jets could not punch the ball into the end zone all throughout the day. The only time they scored that touchdown was late after the Jalen Hurts interception in which the Eagles gave up that touchdown in order to get a minute 40 plus left on the clock with a couple of timeouts in hopes that Jalen Hurts could matriculate downfield for his six game winning drive of his career. Did not happen. And the Eagles sack wise had a sack party against New York. Hassan Reddick had two and a half. Milton Williams had a half sack. Jordan Davis had a half sack. Brandon Graham finally got on the board with the half sack as well. You had five sacks of Zach Wilson. You consistently showed your best pass rush in a game this year, and you now go home sour taste in your mouth knowing that you blew this game, and you squandered a great opportunity to remain 6-0, and but really, you win this game to go to 6-0. and You stay undefeated. San Francisco 49ers lost. These two teams are jockeying for the number one seed in the NFC. After this week, I do still think they are the top two teams in the NFC. And I'm not sure it's all that relatively close when you compare other teams in this conference. So you lost an opportunity to get a game on the Niners. You have to play the Niners again later this year. And these types of things matter. It's Eagles, it's Jets. It doesn't cost you all that much in this division. But you look at the schedule, this is when things get really, really hard for this football team. And we've talked about this for months and months and months. It was really important for the Eagles to start off fast because of the difficult middle portion of this schedule. And that's about to come into play. you got to be able to beat the New York Jets without Aaron Rodgers. You just do. But now you have Miami at home, at Washington, against Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco, Dallas, and Seattle. Those are eight games in a row where if you win five of those, that is a great, great accomplishment that you can certainly brag about. And now you lose this game, and it makes things a little bit more challenging going up against a Miami team that you know is going to try to attack your secondary, which is beaten down and battered. You were without Darius Slay today, but Reed Blankenship left with an injury. Eli Ricks left with an injury. Um, you're already thin there. Bradley Roby had to go into the tent. So he got hurt as well, and now you have the Miami Dolphins coming to town, averaging the most points in the NFL. What's also uncharacteristic about this game, some of the miscues that you just don't see from a Nick Sirianni-led team. Getting the calls in late, that's kind of been a constant issue this year. Some of the penalties, some of the missed assignments, the missed blocks. Devontae Smith, really weird game. 
He hasn't gotten it going since week two against the Minnesota Vikings, and there were some plays in this one where Smitty dropped some easy throws and catches that he should have been able to reel in. Dallas Goddard, he's the one who dropped that ball and didn't have good ball security, which led to the Jalen Hurts interception, the first one that went to Quinn and Williams. These things need to get cleaned up for Philadelphia, and they need to get cleaned up fast because the book is out. What the Jets did defensively, other teams are going to try to replicate that. This game looked very much like the Eagles against the Patriots, the Eagles against the Minnesota Vikings, where they struggled to move the football, and everything seemed to be a little bit monotonous and watered down to a certain degree. You couldn't run it, you couldn't throw it, you couldn't pass protect, you couldn't open up uh, running lanes for any of your running backs. I like what the Eagles did early in this game when they went down the field and they set the tone. They got a little bit lucky on that first opening drive, but I thought that Brian Johnson was really creative on that first drive with a lot of pre-snap motion, unique looks. The Eagles start this game with a near 10-minute drive on that Jalen Hurts touchdown, which gave them that 7-0 lead when they went 91 yards down the field on 19 plays. And then after that, they really, really struggled offensively as the Jets began to adjust. So the Eagles go down. They are now 5-1. and one. The good news is, is that the Niners also lost today to an opponent that they should have beaten. Both of those teams look sloppy as the top dogs in this conference. And now looking ahead, things get a little bit hairier for Philadelphia, especially considering that they're a little bit banged up. Before we hop on out of here, please make sure you subscribe to the show for daily and year-round updates on the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll be back next week for another watch party in primetime against the Miami Dolphins. You do not want to miss it. It's youtube.com slash Eagles. Now we're going to pop that link up right now, and we'll be back tomorrow to recap everything that happened with Philadelphia here today.